Welcome to the Hard Cam Wrestling Podcast. This is another edition of Wrestling for Beginners with me, your host, Ryan Palmer, uh, alongside, once again, my good friend, my good lady friend, Jill. Say hello, Jill. Hello. Uh, mind everyone, without revealing way too much about yourself, um, who you are, what, what's your wrestling background, etc. Well, I have no wrestling background, um, and my wrestling background is really you talking to me endlessly about wrestling, and then me finding that I wanted to know out more, <laughs> wanted to know more even about it, and then started to watch the wrestling and found that actually I quite liked it, which was a little bit of a surprise. Um, so yeah, I don't have a big wrestling background, or at least the the background that I do have is very recent. But I'm I'm quite enjoying watching it, and I'm enjoying learning about it. It. And obviously, you've been a great help with that because you obviously know an awful lot, so that's been great. Um, and for reasons I don't necessarily understand, do you want to hear what I think about it? I definitely like to hear what you think about it because it's a very unique uh, point of view from a very new wrestling fan, uh, especially the fact that you're that new, you've, you've latched on to New Japan and you've latched on to AEW. Usually, it's um, new fans would get into WWE first, or would have been uh, in the WWF stroke E first, and then maybe go on to the other uh, independents, other promotions, um, then to uh, promotions such as AEW or New Japan. So it's a it's a very unique, different situation uh, that we've got here. Um, so last time we spoke about, uh, I think we spoke about terminology, heels and faces, um, and various match stipulations, and match styles. Was there anything specifically that you wanted to speak about today? Yeah, there was quite, a, well, a couple of things that came up in different ways. Um, I watched the AEW Brody Lee tribute show. Yeah. Um, which was really interesting. And I know obviously you've already done a show that was about that, you know, very much from the point of view of people who knew and understood the gravity of what had happened there. And obviously for me, I, I'm new to it. So I, I didn't know Brody Lee per se, other than just my new interest in AEW. Um, but I have to say, just from a new person's point of view, watching that show was incredibly emotional, even though I don't have the level of investment in it that you and, and other people who've been into wrestling for a long time would have had. Um, it wasn't lost on me, um, the emotion that was coming out in the performances. I saw that very clearly. Um, there wasn't one match, for example, that I didn't really, really enjoy. And that's the first AEW that I've watched where I thought that. Um, and obviously that was clearly because of the emotion. But that was interesting. And um, another stuff that it's um, new for me is about understanding about the wrestling community as well, because a lot of the, you know, pieces to camera that were, weren't the actual um, matches were really interesting to see how that works. And that was new to me. Um, and I really enjoyed that, even though it was incredibly sad, obviously. Um, and, and by the end, you know, watching his son at the end was, yeah, I mean, if you're human, you couldn't have not been emotional to, to watch that. So I did really enjoy it very much um, in, in a sad way. But there were a couple of questions that it did sort of bring up for me because obviously there were um, tag team matches. And some of the tag team matches that I've watched in the other shows, I don't always fully understand what's going on. I quite enjoy them because there's a lot going on and um, it can be quite chaotic. And sometimes that's, you know, it really entertaining to watch. But I did want to know, like, how do the tag team matches work? What exactly is the objective of the tag team matches? Because sometimes it gets so chaotic, I can't quite follow what's happening. In terms of a tag team match, it's basically it's two teams um, of two people, sometimes three, uh, sometimes four, maybe like even more than that. But generally, a tag team match is uh, two versus two. Um, usually the two people are a proper tag team they could be related they could be cousins brothers uh some instances father and son um like the 
young bucks who are in AEW. Yeah. Yeah. Um, like the like private party in AEW, the young bucks and and um, the young bucks and private party. You can tell they're a, a tag team. They dress similar. Um, they do synchronize moves. Uh, one does. One knows where the other is going to be. Um, they have a, a, a tag finisher. Um, those are like proper tag teams. Sometimes you'll get two people thrown together to be a tag team. Um, again, going to the AEW example, you may have seen on previous. I think you might have been. You might have seen on previous shows. Or you might have come into it just slightly late. Uh, Kenny Omega and Hangman Page were like thrown together sort of they, they were in like a, a I think I did see that group, actually yeah um uh called the um they're in a, a group called the known as the uh the elite they're not really a tag team they're not they don't dress similar one's got a different gimmick to the other um so actually you you also get some mixed tag teams as well uh it's like man uh, male and female versus oh. male and female You've told me that before, and I have to say, I haven't seen that yet, but that's something I'm really keen to see. I think that would be really interesting, From uh, maybe just because I'm a woman, but from my point of view, seeing a, a mixed team would be, I haven't seen it yet, but I, I think that would be really interesting. Probably find you something on YouTube and send you that to have a look at. You might, there's a lot of the times that happens on WWE shows, uh, it doesn't happen too often on if often at all on AEW there was supposed to be um, a big match between with Cody and uh, his wife versus Shaq and um, some woman I can't remember what her name is apologies for that uh, but because Cody's wife got <laughs> I, pregnant I will make absolutely no comment <laughs> <laughs> um, but Cody's wife's pregnant so she can't perform anymore so I mean generally to your point uh, to your question the aim of a, a tag team, the aim of any match, really, uh, simple and plain, is just to win a match. Um, in the case of a tag team, it may be to win the tag team championship title belts, uh, which proclaim it to be the, the best tag team within that particular company. How it works is that it's, there's always one tag team, uh, one, one, one wrestler is on the outside, the other is on the inside, the one that is on the outside has to hold a tag team rope, which is um, attached to the, the ring post. And they're not really allowed to um, let that go. They're not allowed to stray. They can't make any tags to their partner uh, without the without holding the tag rope. A tag is where when the wrestler inside the ring um, slaps a high five, say, to his partner on the outside which makes that person the tag team partner on the outside legal and the tag team partner on the inside illegal but they've got a, a count of five the, to get out the ring right. uh, and that the guy on the in, on the outside has a, a count of five to get in the ring otherwise they, they count it out and the ref uh, throws the match out um, so that's it, really. The, uh... It brought up another couple of questions. Is it okay if I just ask about other things that I was just thinking there? Absolutely. Um, you know, like you said, it's there's usually tag teams um, like Young Bucks or something. Yeah. That are, you know, specifically sort of tag teams and there'll be a thing around them. I might have misunderstood this, but sometimes I think I've watched where it's like the tag team, like Young Bucks, but, but plus a another. Yes, yeah, yeah. How do they decide who that would be and how that would work? And and then if it's the thing where there's somebody on the outside who's got to stand on the outside and be wait wait to be tagged or whatever, what happens yeah. with the third person? The third person would just stay outside the ring until they're tagged in by whoever's inside the ring. Um, the way they, they work out who the third person would be is just basically whatever the storyline is at the time. Right. Maybe... Let's say the Young Bucks have got um, a beef with uh, with Private Party and Private Party's got a manager uh, called Matt Hardy um, and each week Private Party 
and Matt Hardy keep attacking the Young Bucks. Um, so what the Young Bucks do is they try and find someone to even the odds, right. or they they'll they'll have a handicap match, which is basically uh, a three on two match, or otherwise they will like they'll go backstage and and. Um, they'll try and find someone. Hey, do you want to team with us against the private party and uh, Matt Hardy? And they'll whoever they find, they find and they'll tag with him. Usually, it could be someone that Matt Hardy's got a beef with or a feud with. Um, so it all ties. So a kind of freeze. ganging up, kind of you know, pulling well, together, you know, against kind of, whatever is the, whatever the storyline is of the common enemy. Or yeah, it, it will tie three stories together. Maybe um, the maybe the Young Bucks um, has a friend called Kenny Omega who is in a feud with um, with Matt Hardy. So there's three. There's, well, there's two um, stories that are tied together. So in a in a win one match, so you got the Hardys and Kenny Omega versus uh, Matt Hardy and Private Party. So Kenny gets to beat up Matt. And the Bucks get to beat up um, uh, Private Party, so that's that's that that would be a three-man tag team situation okay. or is, a trio. Is there, would it be called a trio? Like, is that? Yeah, there is yeah. something called a trio. Is where there's actually a specific. There's a um, there's three tag team titles in Japan. There's a trios title uh, in Mexico. There's trios titles. Um, not many other American um, promotions have a trios title. I think Ring of Honor, which is another um, promotion, they had a trios championship at one point. I think they still might, but I'm not too sure. Do the tag teams like something like Young Bucks? Do they ever wrestle individually? Yes, as, the, the, there's, as there's, well. Yeah, again, it could be due to storylines. Maybe again, going, using the same. Uh, example um, uh, let's see for example two of private party maybe private party and Matt Hardy ambushes both the young bucks and uh, they injure Nick Jackson so Nick Jackson got a broken arm or a broken leg and he can't compete um, so, uh, so Nick Jackson's on the injured list Matt Jackson goes to management and says Right, I want a match of all three of them. But management says, no, you can't have all three of them. That's unfair. You can have one of them. So it'll be like, all right, I'll take Matt Hardy. So it'll just be um, Matt Jackson versus Matt Hardy in a match. Uh, and maybe the, the uh, rest of private party will be around the ringside to show support to, uh, to Matt Hardy. If that's what you meant. So yes, yeah, no, yeah, that, no, no, that teams. was that, that was what I meant. I just I didn't know if there was ever a scenario where they were split apart and they ever were just on their own doing something, or was it just they would only ever you know be wrestling together as a tag situation? The Bucks, ninety nine percent of the time, would be uh, wrestling as a tag team. Uh, there was like instances during the course of the year where Nick was missing for a while. Um, and Matt was wrestling on his own, or one or the other. I can't remember. I can't figure out which one who, who is who. Um, if you go to flipping it to a like a to WWE, where they've got a, a stable called uh, the New Day, which has got Biggie, Kofi Kingston, and Xavier Woods. They're a, like a, a three man, three man trio, or, or were. Um, there was a time where two of two out of three of the New Day got injured, so one of the New Day uh, just competed as a, a single star um, before they all got split off into two separate brands. Uh, brands. So it's entirely conceivable that um, a tag team can just wrestle on their own. They may maybe there, there's instances where there's a permanent split. Uh, one of the tag team can't stand it anymore and turns on his tag team partner uh, and so they, they go off in a separate directions like um, back in the 80s uh, well 80s, 90s there was a, a tag team in the WWF called the Rockers which consisted of Shawn Michaels and uh, Marty Jannetty 
um, and they were like the best tag team um, of the generation. They used high flyer moves. Um, they were super athletic. They were workhorses, uh, and they were charismatic. They had girls like screaming for them, like they were pop stars and stuff. Um, but um, Sean was the more charismatic of the two, and he he had more mic time. He was able to speak more on the mic. He he could cut promos better than uh, Marty did, um, and. Uh, Sean got a bit of a big head um, whenever there was a, a match any sort of random tag team match between the Rockers uh, and some jobber team <laughs> um, I don't know what a jobber is I think I might have already told you what a jobber is um, um, Sean would Marty would be in the ring doing all the work uh, getting beat up or beating up his opponent. Um, Sean would be on the outside falling and talking to fans and talking to girl fans and chatting them up and stuff. Um, and Marty would uh, almost get pinned in the ring. Um, or Marty would do all the work and then it'd be that time for the finisher, but Sean would tag himself in and get the pin. Um, and steal the pin, so he'd done nothing. So there was like a, a, seg- a couple of segments where there was an interview segment where uh, Marty and Sean were talking. Uh, Sh- Marty was getting a bit pissed off with Sean and saying, oh, Is there a problem? Do we need to split? And Sean was like, No, 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 my head's in the game. My head's in the game. Um, well, we'll change for the better. And then they, I think they had a match and something fucked up and they, they lost their chance at tag titles. And they were on another segment the next week, uh, and Sean uh, turned on Marty, by basically super kicking him in the face and then throwing him through a window. Um, so that caused a split between Marty and Sean. Uh, Sean became a single star. And Marty became a single star, but not as big as Sean did because okay. uh, what- Marty was a bit uh, wasn't as good as Sean. Basically, he had, he had loads of problems anyway. Uh, drug problems and stuff, and Sean was able to um, make a career out of being a single star. Well, explain what, sorry, <clears throat> I know you said, I think I've told you before about, um, I think you said jobber, jobbers, <laughs> or I, I don't think you yeah. have. <laughs> can, you just, can you give me that <clears throat> information? That'd be good. A jobber or an enhancement talent um, is someone that uh, is, a, is someone that you use in the ring to make yourself look uh, better. They don't ever win a match or they seldom win a match. Um, You'd have like a a big star versus um, a jobber. uh, And the jobber's role is just to to get beaten up uh, and make, and to sell all the moves from the bigger star. Um, So for example, it would be, um, let's say Kenny Omega versus uh Joe Bloggs from Heaton. Uh, <laughs> and, and Joe Bloggs from Heaton's not gonna win that match. But Joe Bloggs from Heaton is gonna take every move from Kenny Omega. Uh he's gonna make he's gonna sell the moves. Kenny Omega's gonna smack Joe Bloggs from Heaton in the face and Joe Bloggs is gonna sell it like he's been hit with a um with a with a sledgehammer. Mm-hmm. Um, he's going to take the finishing move and he's going to lay down for the three count he's not going to kick out or anything um, so and, and that'd be something called a squash match wherein the, the bigger star would completely steamroll the jobber um, for the win without any real offence um, so that's the role of a jobber is it is an enhancement talent to make the, the bigger star look great look look great i get that interestingly though there was another phrase that was used in the Brody lee tribute again which I, I didn't understand and wanted to ask about what is blue chippers i think it's blue chippers if i've said it wrong <coughs> like obviously you don't laugh but um, no, 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 i no, think no, that's no. what they said what is blue chippers they, they may have said that in relation to uh uh, it could have been private party they were talking about, or that the, the tag team that, um, that wraps to the ring. I can't even remember their name anymore. Uh, maybe in the comments you can tell us uh, on Facebook. Um, but Blue Chipper refers to uh, someone that is just starting out. 
they may also be referred to as green or a green horn, um, which is basically a new or a newbie. But it's basically that's what it is, a newbie. Someone that's just starting out. Right. Okay. Um, got you. And uh, they're really, really impressive, but they're really, really young. Um, and they're really enthusiastic. Um, and they're really talented. That's a blue chipper. Dwayne Johnson, aka The Rock. When he started out, he was he his debut kind of gimmick was that he was a, a second generation, actually third generation blue blue chipper. Um, so that's what they referred to him as. He was a smiling white meat baby face um, that always smiled, always won matches, um, and was new to the business. So it's, it's basically someone that's new to the business, very enthusiastic, very talented, highly thought of uh, within the wrestling business and their peers and the older generation uh, that look to the, the, the blue chipper, if that makes any sense. It does. That totally makes sense. I mean, that was sort of most of my questions from watching that Brody Lee tribute. But obviously, the other thing that I watched was that New Japan match that you sent to me, um, which I think was from quite a while ago. But it was really quite interesting because it was uh, two Japanese wrestlers. Um, and there was just some stuff from that as well, if, if I'm all right to ask you some mm-hmm. more stuff about that. I think that. it was Akada and Takagi, I think it was. Uh, but what were you going to ask? Oh, well, well, partly ask and partly just more talk as well about, you know how I'd said before that I really do like the New Japan stuff, but I hadn't seen very much of it. And you sent me this one and I still really like the New Japan stuff. And I know you've told me that I'm sort of booking the trend in terms of what other people tend to get into. And I suppose maybe that's just because of what I've ended up watching first, maybe. Although I have yeah. seen a little bit of WWE, but... The little bits that I have seen so far don't, don't excite me in the same ways as I get, you know, really enjoy the AEW, but really the New Japan stuff particularly, I, I really do like. And I definitely like this a lot, even though it was from a while ago. Um, and to be fair, that might be a little bit in part because I do have a slight interest in Japanese culture anyway. Um, so it might be a little bit to do with that. Um, it has a, a, a different feel to it. Um, it it's kind of it has like nods to sumo at at times and it has a sort of kind of the feeling of the authenticity of it sometimes some of the american stuff can be so i don't want to say over the top but there's a there's a lot of you know you know drama around it that's very Uh um kind of it's enjoyable to watch in a way it's very entertaining but there's something slightly darker about the Japanese stuff which that often is about a lot of the other things I might have seen um, in, in you know whether it was anime or manga or other stuff in, in Japan that I quite enjoy and you can see that in this as well um, that I really do enjoy but I, there were also some other bits in that match that I thought were done really well like there were bits that looked like they'd gone wrong but really did look like they'd gone wrong you know it wasn't just that you know that it's a kind of choreographed move, but you you really are kind of questioning in your mind, you're like, has, has that actually gone wrong or has it, you know, which I quite enjoy because I like that bit where you're not quite sure if it's, you know, exactly what's happening because it keeps the suspense, yeah. if that makes any sense. Um, and I definitely enjoyed that a lot, but there were also just a couple of, and, and again, I think I said this about one of the other matches that I'd watched, I do like it when I can't quite tell what's going to happen till right at the end. And yeah. that might just be because I'm really new to it. In time, if I watch enough of it, I might just know. But at the minute, I still can watch matches if they're really good when I haven't got a clue what's going to happen till the end. And I quite enjoy those ones. But this was definitely another one that felt like that. Um, and it still has the same sort of brashness and the same bravado about it, but felt very different to American and British things that I've seen. So I definitely liked that. But there were some things that came out in it. Um, actually, funnily enough, before you said about Mexican wrestling, they brought up that one of the guys had been um, had, had done Mexican wrestling before. So yeah. I don't know anything about that. What is that? What is Mexican wrestling? Uh, just to correct myself, first of all, the match was Hiroshi Tanahashi versus Akara. That's the match that I sent you. Um, um, and the style, there is a specific style that is attributed to the Japanese style, which 
um, makes it darker, like you, you said, which um, I'll allude to in a second. It's something called strong style. As there's some people call it Japanese strong style, where there um, there's a lot of striking involved, lots of kicks, lots of slaps, um, yeah. lots of punches, lots of headbutts that connect. Um, so that's why it looks real, because a lot of it, I, I guess, to, to me, is real. Um, they're not really holding back the punches. Um, when you hear a, a slap, someone getting the, the chest slapped, the chest is really, really being slapped for real. Um, people I'm land. not sure what it says about me, but it's definitely something about that dog <laughs> side of it that I really do quite enjoy. <laughs> yeah, maybe we'll explore that uh, at a later date. <laughs> <laughs> you might need to edit that bit out. <laughs> Down this lockdown. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> <clears throat> do carry uh, on. So yeah, um, the moves. There's a, there's a lot of moves where people will land on their head or land on their neck and, and the back of their neck, which they're not really supposed to, but they do. Um, the head there has been. I can't remember who it was. Um, I think he either died or he had to retire because he um, he headbutted someone for realsies so much in a match he fractured his skull um, and that completely yeah. fucked him up. So he, he developed a blood clot on his brain. Um, think he's now dead. I'm, I'm not sure. I could very well be wrong about that. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> But, um, well, I didn't necessarily so, want to take it that far, but uh... so that's the, the darkness. The, there are yeah. storylines in uh, a New Japan match, um, but they're not as overblown and as dramatic as the uh, like WWE or the any like Western kind of promotion, any uh, like AEW or WWE. You'll not find people cutting twenty-minute promos in the middle of the ring. Um, well, it's interesting when you said there about cars compared to Western, because that was another question I've got. So what recent in the recent New Japan stuff that I've seen, obviously some of the Western wrestlers have moved to New Japan. So what drives that? Is it a financial thing? Is it uh, better paid to be there? Is it just a, a developmental thing that they want to try different things or like what what makes them go to the New Japan um, stuff rather than stay with WWE or EW or whatever else? creative um in japan in new japan you can be more creative you're let loose you, your wings are not clipped you're not limited to a certain match type um and you're not limited basically you, you're not limited you can near enough do what you want um you're not gonna be told to go out and uh, wrestle a five minute match and then end the match with a, a, a surprise roll up or a, a dodgy DQ finish or be told to go out what and cut. What does that mean? DQ. D DQ. Yeah. That's a, that's short for disqualification. Oh, just, sorry. Obviously. That's <laughs> right. <Lauren. laughs> I, I, that's I didn't. <laughs> so, like in a, at a WWE match, someone will hit someone with an illegal object and get disqualified. Right. Okay, DQ. Sorry. Um, but in New Japan, you seldom see that. I don't think I've ever seen that in a New Japan match. I've seen a count out where somebody's um, been outside the ring for a count of 20 and they've lost a match because uh, they've had their shoelaces tight on the barrier or something like that. But um, I don't think I've ever seen um, many count outs or many disqualifications. Um, there is, for, and for someone going from like, WWE to New Japan that's generally because they've been let go from WWE um, they've, they've run their course in WWE and the management have just said now we've got nothing for you, good luck in your future endeavours and they get fired 90 days later they will either appear on the indies or some of them will go to uh, New Japan um, In terms of the Japanese audience for New Japan have will they often have been fans of the Western styles as well like wwe or whatever is is that like so if they turn up in japan will they already be known is what i mean to the audiences sometimes um i think what tends to happen is well, there's, there's a number of things that can happen you'd either go from we if you're really young to japan and start off at the bottom as a 
a young lion, um, which is uh, just a, a trainee um, or a or a young boy, which basically means you would be. Um, can you remember? It's like a football term, a boot, a boot boy. Where do you, do you have you ever ever oh, heard well, of a boot where, boy? Where you where you start off, where you just clean the boots and do the exactly the sort of general yes. yeah. That is the exact comparison. You you'd be you'd carry someone's bags. Yeah, uh, yeah. You'd you'd sleep in the dojo. You'd sleep on the floor in the dojo. You would make food for the more experienced wrestlers. Um, you would come out to the ring during the wrestlers' match, but um, you just be at ringside and just watch and learn. So it's, it, and it can it. be like a training ground. Sort it of can time. be like a training ground, uh, and then you'd graduate. You'd have a few matches, but you'd be bland as fuck. You'd have like black boots, black trunks, and that's it. You might have like a five-minute match before a big show, and that's it. Um, there's a, a, a lad who wrestled in England called Gabriel Kidd who used to wrestle um, on a, for a company called WCPW, uh, Stroke Defiant, and a few other companies. Um, he's now in Japan. He's, he's changed his image. He's, he's, a, he's a young boy, um, so he'll probably make it big. There was someone called CJ Parker who wrestled in America uh, for NXT, which is the developmental for WWE. Yeah. He got he got let go from there. He ended up in Japan. Um, I think he was a, a young boy for a while, um, but he changed his gimmick and became someone called um, Juice Robinson. Uh, he got like he a, a better <laughs> gimmick. Um, so it's basically so there's that there's that route. Or mm-hmm. uh, if you are a well known wrestler from the US, for example, say. Um, AJ Styles, who is is one of the biggest stars, if not the biggest star in a, in Western wrestling, um, he left a company called um, TNA Total Nonstop Action, uh, went to Japan and became uh, the leader almost immediately, uh, a leader of a, a group a faction called the the Bullet Club in Japan, and he was with them for a number of years so that can happen um i think that's that's or you could be a veteran you might just leave um you might retire or come back you might have been a journeyman you might have uh, had um different stints in different companies in the u.s and just decided to end up on new japan um i can't Actually, think of many there there are examples of that, but I can't think of Michael Elgin uh, is a wrestler at Springs to Mind who's done that. Um, but uh, so th- those would be the factors either to rejuvenate your career, start a career, or even possibly end your career in Japan. Um, no, that's really interesting that it can be both ends. That it can, you know, that that's like there's different routes with that before though we were saying about the mexican wrestling mexican, and we didn't yeah. really finish that like what oh, no. tell me more about that as well because again that came up and i was really interested because I'd, obviously i know nothing about that so the, the the best uh company that i know of in mexico would be uh triple a triple a r um mexican wrestling's been around for a number of years it is very well respected. It is taken really, really seriously. Um, mostly typified by um, masked wrestlers uh, or, or and luchadors or, or masked luchadors. A luchador is a wrestler that is really fast. Um, it's really athletic. They do very high flying moves. Um, you would see them bouncing off the ropes, running really fast through the ropes, doing dives to the outside, top rope manoeuvres, uh, going to the top rope, doing uh, flips, moonsaults, which is where you, you stand on the top rope and you jump backwards into the ring. You, you land flat on the downed opponent or a, a, a 360 where, again, you, you're facing forward on the top rope and you, you jump and you flip around and land on your your opponent there's moves called like a hurricane runner 
where you would jump and your legs would land on the shoulders of an opponent and you would twirl around and you'd flip them. Um, um, do you ever watch that? I mean, do, you know, it's sometimes ne- it's, it's not really easily accessible. Um, if, if I wouldn't so not go like out on my main way networks to, or yeah, no. yeah, I mean, there is the sometimes the triple mania event will be on YouTube. Triple mania is like I was, yeah, I was say, that? that's their big show, like WWE has WrestleMania or like. New Japan has uh, Wrestle Kingdom. Kingdom triple yeah. Triple A has Triple Mania, um, where you'll see say, lots of high flying action, luchadors in masks, um, a lot of people in masks. Um, not much in the way of um, like ground based submission moves or any strikes like Japan. Uh, it is a lot of high flying moves. And they work a different style as well. So, for example, I'm fairly sure of this um, in the US and Japan, uh, what we do is we work the left side, which means that we would, if I'm going to whip somebody off the ropes, uh, or like, put, yeah, if I'm going to whip them off the ropes, I would do that by. Um, using my left hand to pull their left hand and throw them into the ropes. Whereas, uh, and we would bump and feed towards the left as well. Bumping is, is basically falling on the on the mat. Uh, so taking a flat back bump or where I would fall backwards um, onto my back, spreading my arms out um, to distribute the, the force of the, of the, the fall. Um, and... I would get to get up to get into the ring. I would always roll over to on my right hand side um, and to uh, get up that way and feed to my opponent. My left hand feed and it's just basically giving without actually giving. It's like stumbling towards your yeah. opponent. Um, but in Mexico, they would do it the opposite way. So they would do it with the right hand side i think i may have completely and utterly screwed that up in my head and it is actually the other way around so <laughs> to, be, if, to be fair you're talking to someone who wouldn't know the difference so anyone but I, guess, but I, take this, your point, I take your point though in the sense that there are different ways and styles of doing yeah. it and obviously they've got a different a different way um a i understand that much of it yeah completely different way you, you need to mm. relearn everything um so, so do, not a do Western though. do Western um, wrestlers ever <clears throat> go to the Mexican wrestling then, or is that too yeah. difficult because they're doing it? You know, so they'd have to do the muscle memory learn of the whole thing in a different way. No, um, the majority of the time, the the promotions are just purely um, are purely Mexican based wrestlers. Although I, I think it's. Is it Triple A? Kenny Omega is currently the the Triple A Mega Heavyweight Champion. So yeah, the Triple A. Yes, he's the Mega uh, Heavyweight Champion. So he has gone down to Mexico. He's gone down to Triple A, and he's won their championship. He holds that title. It appears on um, on AEW every so often, not all the time. Um, the Triple Mania event that's just gone. Kenny Omega went to uh, Mexico to defend that championship, and he's still and he's and he uh, retained the championship. So he's still the the mega heavyweight champion uh, of Triple Mania of Triple R, I should say. So he, he's the only one that I'm fully aware of that's so well known uh, that has gone down there. As I said, I don't pay too much attention to Triple Triple A, so I don't know if anyone has of any uh, grandiose note apart from Kenny gone down to uh, perform for AAA before or Mex- or other Mexican promotions. Oh, it's just really interesting. I mean, you know, obviously as somebody new to all of this, the idea that any of all of this exists is still very new, which is why I'm really interested in it. So when they mentioned, you know, that, um, you know, a guy had been in, in Mexico, it's like, oh, really? What's that about then? You know, it sort of more intrigues my interest. 
Um, yeah, they're treated you, like royalty and movie stars down there. There's, there's films being made of um, of of wrestlers and and lucha wrestlers starring in films, um, living the gimmick, never taking off the mask, keep, really keeping kayfabe twenty four seven. So it, it's Say, what does that mean? Say that again. Kayfabe. What kayfabe. K a y f a b e. Uh, it's an old carny term. It's, it, means fake um i mean i'm so guessing you mean like keeping in character yeah keeping in character yeah if some, yeah i if just didn't know what the what the phrase was though yeah but yes i get i get it i get the concept of it yeah they, so they keep <clears throat> character all of the time yes yep. you don't break k they don't break kayfabe so if for example you and i were uh i was a wrestler and you were my um on tv you were my valet um, but I treated you like shit and you did everything to what? my beck and call on TV. Um, mm. And we were out in public. Um, we would do this. I would do, I would do the same thing. We would do the same thing that we would do in the ring. So I'd say, oh, my money's dropped on the floor, pick it up. And if anyone outside saw it, and was like, oh shit, Tim, he's still in character. So that, that that's keeping kayfabe. Yeah, yeah. Ah, wow. Ah. Well, you brought me back to, well, you brought me to Connie, but Connie's going to have to be for another time because I've already sort of said to you outside of our, our chats, our chats in public, that I, like the Connie side of it and understanding more about that's really interesting to me as well. So I do want to ask you more about that. But I think I've, I think you, you all might be glad to know. I think I might have exhausted my lengthy questions from what I watched this week. Oh, well, we'll carry on this conversation afterwards. Um, uh, pull, pulling back the curtain, Jill has two fake, so she uh, <laughs> I, I do, and, she, and, and she's drinking loads of wine and taking painkillers as well, so she can't speak to her for too long. <laughs> Otherwise, she'd be do speaking you mind? gibberish. <laughs> so, on that bombshell, uh, I'm just gonna. I'm going to plug socials. I'm going to say you can find me on Twitter at Yardy316. Um, you can follow the podcast on Twitter at Hardcam Podcast. Um, you can subscribe and follow on YouTube where there will be content on there uh, visually at some stage. Um, you can follow on Podbeam and listen on Podbeam. Uh, we are now on Apple Podcasts, we're on Google, and we are on Spotify as well. Uh, also, find us on Facebook. Uh, I'd say find me on Facebook, but I'm not going to be on there for the last 25, until 25 days is up because I'm banned. Um, so, as we always say, would you like to say goodbye? Do you have anything to plug at all, Joe? No, I have nothing to plug. But thank you to the people who want to listen to me ask all the questions about my newfound love of the wrestling. Marvellous. Excellent. So we're out of time, folks, and I will see you soon. Sarah, folks. <laughs> <laughs>